Hi hey YouTube, um, me and Max have just been out today and brought an orange bubble tipped anemone. I don't know if you can see it very well, but uh, I'm just making a quick video how to introduce him um, to the tank. So first of all, I've made a French knot or French hoop, whatever you prefer to call it, and uh, pegged it to the basket, to the tank. And uh, now all I'm doing is taking out a bit of the water that's in, in the uh, bag. So when I introduce my own, there's uh, enough room to get my water in. And obviously I, I don't want to um, put the, the store water into my tank, because I know my tank's pretty clean at the moment. So well, what I'm going to do is pause this, and about every 10 minutes, just with a baster, between an hour and an hour and a half, I'm just going to add probably that much water to the anemone in the bag and just slowly uh, uh, introduce it where hopefully he's going to go is down in that corner but whatever he does we'll, we'll have to wait and see uh, but I think when he gets big then that corner will look, look quite nice I know people say that you should wait an hour, um, an hour a year before having an anemone um, and I do understand that this tank has only been running I'd say for four months but the water in the tank was out of my old tank or the rock was out of my old tank and pretty much everything was out of the old tank that I broke down so although this this tank's probably had another 60 to 80 litres in it of fresh water all the rock in that has been in, in my old tank for between two and three years so hopefully now I've got the, the chemicals stable enough in the water to for him to um, to survive. I mean, I do do water tests on a weekly basis, and um, it's it's all uh, been looking good. Um, so I'll pause it and I'll let you know how he gets on. So what I'm going to do next is I'll, I've just gone into my refuge and um, thinned out some of my algae. But what I'm going to do is take some pieces of rock rubble. I often keep some knocking about in the refuge. Um, and use it to create, well, to try and create a bit of a base for the, um, an enemy to, to hopefully root to. So I'm just going to have a, have a good look at it. Um, check I haven't got no nuisance algae or such going on it. This is quite cool. Yeah, so I haven't got any, any nuisance stuff going on it. So what I'll do now is just position it to try and get a bit of a cave sort of sort of thing in which hopefully it can anchor down to. So something like that. Um, just have to try and relocate as many corals as I can, just so it doesn't get tempted to walk over and sting anything. Um, that's button polyps can generally go anywhere, they're not an aggressive type. Um, and the other corals aren't really aggressive to them, so they can go up there next to the old ones. But yeah, so that's that bit sort of thing. I'm on. Yeah, like that. So yeah, hopefully he'll, he'll take down there. Um, it's been 10 minutes since I last added some water. So it's time to add a bit more. So as I say, get to about there. Get that much water out of the base there. And just add it like that. You can drip feed. Well, I find that, that um, dripping the food, the water into the bag it's generally harder to be honest so it's just as easy with a turkey baster so as you can see now it's uh, 40 minutes on and we're still still introducing it you can see the difference in the amount of water in the bag now but if you actually look at the, the coral the animal you'll see that it says it 
it's not shriveled up it's it's only smaller than enemy to be honest but it's as it should be and this is the difference when you introduce something fast or slowly how it should be introduced um, it, if it was in distress it would all be shriveled up now um, but it's still quite expanded so it's got no flow and it's still being introduced slowly so uh, we'll see how he goes in so as you can see now um, the anemone has got the water mixed um, and it's all still out the thing is what some people do it some people don't but the way I like to introduce my corals to the tank um, is to take them out because I don't like to use the water that's been um, got from the shop because uh, I know that mine's free from any parasites so just gently lift lift the creature off and then lower it down where you, where you want it to go sticky little thing it's actually stuck his foot to the bottom of my finger oh my. I'm just trying to get it to go on to something now. Sticky little things these are. I'm trying to keep them keep them away from anything else. So See how he's doing in there. See if I'll tie it to it. So let him try and find find a rock to anchor up to now. And uh, I'll post another video in a bit. See how he's doing. So he's been in probably about a minute now. And he's started to latch himself onto a rock. And uh, seems to be doing quite well actually. Quite impressed. So I'll just see how, how he goes. Um, how he seems to find it in there. And uh, I'm sure he'll move if he doesn't like it in that placement. But I can't see why he wouldn't because everything that, that that's doing at the moment suits its needs. So this is the anemone. About an hour and a half after putting him in at uh, first. What I'm gonna say now is when I introduce the introduce when I put the piece of rock out the sump in, um, they had bits of macroalgae on. If you can see all the crabs eating it all off, um, which is gonna lead me on to my next video about feeding the tank, and how to make sure you're just feeding what's necessary um, to get everything to work for you. I mentioned before about nuisance algae. Well, this is what you need: a good clean-up crew uh, of hungry crabs, which will work for you when you need them to work. And that's just through feeding what needs to be fed in the tank and not feeding excessively, which will create problems. But uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.